The CDC has just recommended that women who are sexually active but not on any form of birth control stop drinking lest the alcohol harm a potential future fetus. This has annoyed a number of my feminist colleagues because it seems to be a part of a particularly pernicious trend where we treat women as pre-pregnant and we treat any future fetus as the be-all, end-all of our decision-making processes. You may have noticed this trend if you or a loved one has been pregnant any time in the last 10 years or so. More and more, we're putting pregnant women under a microscope to determine if their every move might hurt or help their fetus. So things like eggs and lunch meat and sushi and, yes, alcohol are in a way looked down upon if a pregnant woman happens to consume them every now and again, even though we're not quite sure of all of the risks and rewards of each of those items. And so because of things like that and a long list of other stuff I don't have time to go into, uh, writing for Slate, Ruth Graham says that it's this sort of thing that's turned modern pregnancy into a nine-month slog of joyless paranoia. All of this is also annoying due to the fact that right now women's reproductive health is at risk, although not from alcohol. In Texas, for instance, they defunded Planned Parenthood and immediately saw a huge increase in the number of babies born to poor women. So in other words, we're forcing women to have babies and then getting super particular about how they're having them. With all of that said and agreed to, I'm not fully on board with the blanket condemnation of the CDC's recommendations that I've been seeing. Graham and others have noted that the research shows that a little bit of alcohol during pregnancy probably isn't a big deal. And that's true although it's mostly true of later on in the pregnancy. The third trimester is about the time when you're pretty much clear to maybe enjoy a glass of wine a day or so, and it probably won't do anything to the fetus. But for the first trimester, the research isn't quite as clear or as comforting. Yes, there are some studies that suggest that mild to moderate drinking, like one drink a day or so, could be okay. But there are more studies that show that any amount of alcohol in the first trimester could have devastating effects, fetal alcohol syndrome, or even miscarriage. And to make matters worse, there could be serious effects even if you are drinking before you know you're pregnant. You might not know you're pregnant for a month or so. And if you're drinking during that time, then yeah, there is a risk of harm to your fetus. And that's what the CDC is trying to put out there. And as for the allegation that the CDC is treating all women as pre-pregnant, it just doesn't hold water because they're not talking about all women. They're targeting their recommendation at women who are sexually active and not using birth control. You might throw in people with working uteruses who are sexually active, but the point still stands. These people are about as close to pre-pregnant as you can get. I submit that these people fall into two major groups. On the one hand, you have people who are having sex without birth control because they are ignorant of birth control and they don't understand the risks. And on the other hand, there are people who do understand the risks and are accepting or even hopeful of the idea of a pregnancy resulting from their actions. Now, for the first group, I would say that they're not listening to the CDC anyway. This recommendation really isn't for them because the CDC also recommends that you use a form of birth control if you don't want to have a baby. So these people are not listening to the CDC. This recommendation is not for them. It's for the other group. So for that last group, the people who are having sex without birth control and know that a pregnancy may result, the CDC's recommendation is a helpful one. Consider the fact that 20% of Americans drink 15 or more alcoholic beverages every week. And one out of six Americans drinks eight or more drinks in one session four times a month. So in other words, they get blitzed on the weekend. So it's pretty easy to understand that there are people out there who are occasionally drinking a lot who might assume that once they get pregnant, they'll just stop drinking and everything will be fine, but they don't realize how early the damage could be done. 
On a side note, I've seen people complain that the CDC is only directing these recommendations at women, while alcohol can also hurt men's reproductive health. Well, I'm happy to inform you that the CDC already does have a fact sheet with recommendations for men when it comes to drinking and sexual health. They point out that drinking too much can have a serious effects on your sexual health, including impotence and infertility. So please bear that in mind, pre-paternal men. So while I do think that some parts of the CDC recommendation are fear-mongering and, dare I say, anti-scientific, as when they state that there's no safe amount of alcohol to drink during any part of pregnancy, that's not what the evidence suggests at this point. On the other hand, I do think that it's a good piece of advice at its heart, which is that if you think you might get pregnant in the near future, you might want to skip the booze for your best chance at having a happy, healthy little fetus.